Forty-five years after the end of World War II, and twenty-eight years after it was built, the Berlin Wall, a symbol of the Cold War and the Iron Curtain, was knocked down, ending the division between East and West Germany. The final fall followed a series of events, including the resignation of East Germany's leader, Erich Honecker, and the 1989 demonstrations in East Germany. Reunification was officially concluded on October 3, 1990. East Germany's German Democratic Republic joined West Germany's Federal Republic of Germany, and the first all-German election was held on December 2, 1990. Having been divided for nearly 45 years between a capitalist West and a communist East, the two Germanys faced economic and social differences. Still, to be unified seems better than to be divided by a heavily guarded buffer zone, otherwise known as the DMZ, or Demilitarization Zone, as is the case in Korea. The divisions in both Germany and Korea after World War II were the results of competing superpowers with rigid ideologies. Yet, after 45 years, Germany became unified, while, 55 years later, Korea remains divided. What made German reunification possible, and what prevents Korea? Can and should Korea follow the German model? Korea is not Germany. Okay? We have a cultural, historical, economic, and social differences between Germany and Korea. Therefore, we can make a reference of some important aspect of German unification, but uh, we should take into account the Korean context. I think the situation between German, Germany and Korea are, are very different. And if we can uh, list the things that allowed Germany to be um, unified and what that, what's lacking in Korea, I, I could um, list at least three, three things. The first is um, that German, um, North, uh, Eastern, East German, Germany and West Germany never had that animosity. They never had that experience of war. Um, whereas Korean, many of, not my generation, but generation before me, had had personal experience of fighting a war against each other, and that's, that memory is still pretty fresh. The Korean War began in 1950 when North Korean forces, supported by the Soviet Union, invaded South Korea, taking over Seoul and almost the entire peninsula. What followed was three years of fighting between mainly the United States and South Korea against China, the Soviet Union, and North Korea. The border between North and South shifted until it was finally established at the 30th parallel in 1953, where it remains today. For North Koreans, the war is called the Fatherland Liberation War, signifying their attempt to unify Korea. I was born five years after the Korean War was over. Um, I still remember um, seeing skulls on the the kids in the neighborhood, like boys, used to like, kick the, the skulls, and I remember feeling pretty um, bothered by it. Um, there was a real propaganda against um, North Korea having different ideas and um, how their leaders were not taking good care of uh, people there. I guess I grew up thinking that they were vicious uh, villains, that if they came to South Korea, they would, um, they would be, they would harm us. And they are the ones who start the war. Um, they are dangerous um, entity. We were told to look out for um, spies from North and to report if we suspected anything. There is a very negative campaign against North Korea. The division in Germany occurred more peacefully, without a war tearing it apart. Wall construction began on August 13, 1961, under Honecker's leadership, to prevent East Germans from fleeing to the West. In addition, peaceful relations between East Germany and West Germany were maintained due to Western Chancellor Willy Brandt's rapprochement policy, Ostpolitik, in the early 1970s. This and several other treaties and agreements helped to regulate relations between East and West Germany and allowed both Germanys to join the United Nations in September 1973. 
In contrast, neither Korea joined the UN until 1991. There is the underlying current of animosity which the Germans didn't have. In, in addition to that, I think there was a real um, agreement amongst the majority of German people, both Eastern and Western German, wishing to have a unified country. The German process towards unification was accelerated when the Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, introduced two new policies, Glasnost and Pustryka. The policies were intended to increase openness to non-communist countries while improving internal society and economy. These policies hugely impacted East Germany citizens. East Germans fled the country through Hungary and Czechoslovakia in a mass exodus and, as East Germany celebrated its 40th anniversary, citizens broke out in protest. They know the people wanted to the revolution and I don't think they could have done much to stop it. On October 18th, Eric Honecker resigned and Egon Krenz replaced him. On November 9th, the German Democratic Republic removed travel restrictions and thousands of East Germans crossed into the western sectors of Berlin, opening the wall. We definitely watched it on TV, what's going on. It was really exciting for us, all the changes. Eric Honecker's predictions that the division would last for 100 years were shattered. I think even now, uh, especially perhaps after uh, Unified German isn't doing as well as they hoped, and all the economic and political difficulties they are experiencing, many of the established Korean um, people have, have doubts whether unification is the way to go. German model of unification by absorption, meaning, meaning West Germany absorbing East Germany, will not take place in, Korean, in the Korean context. Because North Korean elite, they are aware of German consequences. Therefore, they will try to avoid the East German route to unification. On October 3, 1990, the East German Constitution acceded to the Federal Republic of Germany's Basic Law. East Germany's Ostmark was also replaced by West Germany's Deutschmark in the July of 1990. The conversion rate was one-to-one -one for wages, prices, and basic savings, while larger amounts were converted at a one-to-two rate. Some economists complained that this inflated exchange rate made Eastern German industries uncompetitive and hurt unification. Nine million East Germans immigrated to the West, and at the same time, capitalism surged into the East. You could buy a lot of stuff now, everywhere where people and selling or sold whatever. I know many people got unemployed. That's the bad part about it. In the case of Germany, even after unification, there have been so called, uh, uh, after the unification, there has been second war between the Eastern and West Germany. Okay. There has something to do with the uh, hasty unification without really healing the fractured pain of heterogeneity and division. Okay. And the and result was a new type of social stratification and emerging social conflict within Germany. It was still East and it was still West. They really didn't unite in the heads. We called the Aussies and the West German people were called the Wessies. There was always kind of a conflict between them.